Bronze sculptor John Coleman looks more like the cowboys he casts than an artist. Working out of his studio in Prescott, he turns out six major new pieces a year. Elisa Adams shows us more about the man breaking the mold. Can a line under the right direction reveal a person's soul? In drawing and painting, a hard edge draws attention. Under John Coleman's steady hand, a line can do more. This is a big celebration about his attitude and how he holds himself. Art, Coleman says, is like a religion to him, one that began to take shape as a young kid who didn't quite fit in. My career, um, I like to say, is born out of a learning disability, like a lot of other artists. I was a kid who uh, absolutely despised school, did my very dyslexic, uh, ADD, all that stuff, I was pushed through. And uh, I spent a lot of time drawing in the back of the class, not paying attention to anything else. But life took him in another direction. For a while, he left the pencils, the paints, the tools of his religion behind. He married, had a family, moved to Arizona, and started a successful business with his wife. But once you've found your true north, abandoning the path can leave you lost. What happens when you give birth to a dream and it doesn't work? You're destroyed by it. So that angst that I felt was very real. And I was dying inside to get to it. And so that day where everything came, it was like an epiphany, it just happened on me. It took me almost 20 years. I was 41, 42 years old when I got back to my art career. When he did come back, he gravitated towards Western art, a place with big vistas, big ideas. Western art is really about metaphors. The Native Americans, of course, are just uh, a way of me telling my story as an American. Everything I, I do as an American uh, is influenced by the Native Americans in a, in a certain way. The stories of the Native Americans that Coleman represents often hold their histories in the deep lines of their faces or the soft edges of the regalia. He chooses these subjects because of their visual power. You know, a businessman in a suit uh, will say one thing, but a full-blown warrior in full regalia with, with a war bonnet tells a visual story that goes way beyond the businessman's suit. And so automatically, that's what's important. Coleman is careful to note that his perspective is always as an outsider. He's not trying to hijack a culture, and he understands that as a non-native, he has to get the details right. So he reads, he talks to his native models, and he asks for guidance from historians. So when I'm creating something, I already have an idea what I, what I want, but I, the fine details are usually passed over to these people and they'll tell me if I'm where, where am I going wrong, what would be more appropriate, what, for this period, what is right, what is wrong, and how that works. And while he seeks advice in some of the representation, the art is all him. You have some kind of a shroud. His signature is in every decision. See how that changes the way she feels? Every pinch of clay. It's like a dance step. It's a, a person's little thing that they do. You can't emulate somebody else's style. It's what happens when you actually understand what you need to project an idea. And you're not thinking about it consciously, you're thinking about it internally. This late in life artist became so proficient at his craft that the poetry of his art is now effortless. He found his authentic voice, and with that came commercial success. This is one of a series called the Explorer Artist Series. His art looks over the galleries of museums. He's part of exclusive groups like the Cowboy Artists of America, and he has collectors who come to him over and over again. But this success carries new responsibilities. And when you have collectors, your responsibility goes up because now you have people that are connected to you who have an expectation. So it's like, hey, I like what you did yesterday, now what do you got? What's your next thing you got? Fortunately, Coleman has no shortage of things to say. In fact, he says he has more to say now in his 70s than he did in his 40s and 50s. I don't want to just make stuff. I'm trying to do something that is poetic. It's trying to be subtle. Subtle is extremely hard. When you're in the beginning, it's like you find you've got some talent, you throw it out there, it's all new, 
people go, wow, this is cool. I've never seen this before. They don't do that anymore. Yeah, I've seen that before. <laughs> I'm going to be 70 years old. That's a nice little benchmark for me. I'm so glad that I'm surrounded by 80 and 90 year old artists who are still working. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on Art in the 48, where we help explore what makes our community beautiful through art. See you next time. Stay up to date on Art in the 48. Sign up for our weekly newsletter at azpbs.org insider.